What's up y'all, today I wanted to do a video talking about the two different methods that I use to incorporate vinyl drum breaks or break beats or amen breaks uh, into melodic tracks that I'm working on. So we're gonna start out with the one that's a little more complicated and that is using Slice X. So I'll play the example that I have here and then we'll go ahead and jump into it. Okay, and so the way that I typically go about this is I will load up a Slice X, um, go into my breaks folder, and if you don't have any drum breaks in your sample folder, just go to Google, type in uh, Amen Breaks or Amen Drum Loops or Vinyl Break Beats or something like that, and then add Reddit to the search, and a ton of people on Reddit have uploaded a bunch of different Amen Breaks and like edits that they've done to them, so I got most of these, I think, for free just from doing that. So what I typically do next is take one, load it into my slice X, and then it auto uh, it auto chops it to where each drum hit is going to be its own sample, uh, and then I just go through and play each of the hits once to make sure that they're not starting at the wrong place or having two different drums in one section. So what I'd typically be looking for is something where it's like this. where you can kind of see the end of one drum is bleeding into the transient of the next one. Or sometimes it's even like this, where it just completely misses a drum. So what I do in this case, uh, if there was not a marker there, is just kind of start it like this. Uh, you can hit M to do this, or go in and just add a marker. I'm not even gonna name it. And then just make sure it's starting on the transient there. So from that point, we kind of have our drum breaks set up. Uh, they're correctly sliced. Um, the next thing that I like to do is get into the articulator section. So the way that this works is each of these articulators is going to control a different um, selection here. So you can think of one as controlling all of these parameters here. And then two, if you change it, has different parameters from one, right? All of these breaks, by the way, too, are uh, in here. So you have like each of your different markers here. And those are referring to the markers down here. So if I go in, set articulator six, the volume section of articulator six to be super short, then you have to enable it, right? So that's not doing anything until I turn it on. Um, and then I could even do like a filter. So go in here, turn my filter on. That's set to off right now. Turn it on to a, a two or whatever, you know, the second sharpest curve turn the cutoff up and make it a high pass. Um, now I have my articulator six is gonna be a really short volume envelope and a pretty steep high pass. I'll make it the most steep. Now if I go in here to any of my samples, we'll do it on marker 10, go into my marker 10. So now in the articulator region settings down here, I'm setting um, which filter I wanna have uh, be the articulator thing for. So. If I set it to filter articulator six now, I should use the filtering section of number six for this particular drum. While the rest of my drums aren't getting that high pass filter on it. Uh, then if I want the volume envelope to do the same thing, I'll set it to six. And now, once it's on six, it's using that envelope and this filter. Um, so the reason that I show that is just because what, what that's useful for is if you want to have a single drum hit, um, I have two examples that I'm going to show with Slice X. If you want a single drum hit to be articulated differently, like let's say you have a hat that you want to be high passed or band passed or a snare in this case, you just want the mids. You can set that up doing that and you can even give it like a shorter gait or uh, whatever shape you want to give it. So... Um, I'm going to actually go in here and reset this whole thing to the auto sliced version. And I will say the next thing that I typically do, let me see, let me go in here and fix my 10th drum hit. So I'm going to set the articulators back to the base form. You can also set them to zero, which means there's no articulation on them. Um, but what I like to do is leave them all set to one and then go to my number one articulator, turn the envelope on. 
And now if I move this around, it's gonna gate all my drums. So now it's uh, cutting the volume down, but you don't have to leave it, uh, you know, you don't have to take it all the way to zero. You can kind of use it like a transient shaper. You get a long hit. So you can kind of hear it. Right to where it's cutting the tail off of it, but not uh, completely bringing it to zero. Because then it doesn't play the end of it at all. So just kind of volume shaping it there and making the transient more pronounced because with breakbeats, um, they can be so powerful that they um, make everything else in your mix kind of muddy. So I like to just set the volume envelope to clean that up a bit. So once I have that all set up, I'll turn on my melodic elements. And just kind of try and write a drum beat that accents what I'm uh, already working with here. So, let me see if I can get this to work. No. So I think I'll put one here and one in front of, normally you'd have like clap, clap on this beat here and this beat here. I think I'm gonna start with this. Yeah. So. It should be like boonsika clap, boonsika clap, something like. Yeah. Then I'm kind of hearing like a ticka ticka. Yeah. Um, and then the next like tip as far as composition goes, I always like I can't highly enough recommend just repeating your section a couple different times. So we'll do a four part section here. And then I'm going to turn off my melodic parts, right? So I had them on before. Now I'm just going to play my drum break pattern. Okay. And for this one, I'm going to make it. So uh, one of the cool things you can do is if you change the pitch of these notes, Instead of just playing an octave down, which would be like right here, um, it actually changes the pitch of your thing that's being played in Slice X. So you're changing the pitch of the drum, not which drum is played, which uh, in some other things that aren't FL native, it will play other drums like Contact, it'll just play different samples. Um, and so for here, I think I'm gonna use this sample pitch down a little bit. Okay, that's sounding good so far. I'm impressed at how well this is going. You, normally breaks are harder for me because I haven't done these as much as other stuff. Um, and let's figure out. I think I'm gonna go like quarter steps here. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna sound good, but we'll give it a try. Uh, and then I'll actually fade the pitches up to this. So. No, that doesn't sound quite, more. you know what it is? I need to go up, not, uh, see about that. No, it's still kind of weird. What about two hits? Or actually, let's just do four symbols instead. And fade them up. And yeah, see, I just said it was going good. And this is what happens. Fade it into that. No, that sucks. Okay, well, uh, we'll go back to the original set here and just pick two different drums out for this part. Okay, that sounds decent. Um, 
So kind of just get a drum pattern going uh, with your with your stuff turned on in the beginning and then turn it off so you can have more, uh, a little bit less like influence on where the transients and, and the rhythm is here. So you're not just doing the same rhythm twice. Uh, then when I play them together, hopefully it'll sound good. And I'll turn my snare piece back on for this too. No, so I should have had the snare on because it kind of clashes with that, but... And so at the end of this now, I'm going to go in and do a little more editing. This is where I'm kind of hearing that like quarter piece at. And then this is a trick that I'll just show that I know works because I've, I've done it before. This is one of my little toolkit tricks that I use. So at the end of this, I've raised these four uh, little repeat hits up some. And now I'll go in here and kind of uniform these to be the pitch that uh, I changed to at the end. So with that, we should have like a drum break that kind of <clears throat> increases in energy as we go. So let's hear what this ended up sounding like. And you could even raise it up again and like keep re reiterating the same thing. But uh, I think you kind of get the idea here. So I'm going to kind of move forward. Um, actually, before I do, I want to show a couple different things that you can also do inside of uh, your, your Slice X here. So Slice X, if you go into the uh, note colors here, your MIDI channel that you're using, this, the note colors correlate to which MIDI channel the MIDI input is getting sent into. As you can see, there's a deck A and a deck B. Um, if you go in and look at your slice X here, the top one is deck A. If you go down to the second one, the bottom one, um, and I'm gonna turn auto dump off, which if you're ever gonna add a new thing into your slice X, you can always undo it if it deletes your pattern. Um, but now I can drop a second thing into my um, into my deck B and let's just see, can I change all these? No, I'd have to go in and change them one at a time. So if I wanted to use my second deck for something now, yeah, that, that drum hit sucks, but if it was a different one, maybe it would probably work. Let's get in. Let's just, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this to work because <clears throat> I haven't, you know, prepped this up. I just kind of thought of this last second. Is it playing the second? Yeah, it is playing the second one. So as you can see, when I when I change my MIDI channel here, it's adding a couple extra drums. Um, so you you could pop you could possibly use two different loops at the same time. Um, but the other thing that I actually I don't often do that. It's just too much uh, different inputs, kind of not that necessary unless you I mean unless you want to. The thing that I do use a lot though is the deck A reversed. So then if you go in and select channel 15 uh, in your drum break loop, that'll get you a nice little reverse. So it's just a reverse of whatever sample you're using in here. Um, and then find a place in your loop. I would even probably say right here is the best place. Yeah, it doesn't, I think it sounds better with the original sample that we had, but just know you can use this. It doesn't have to be on the end beats. Like if I try it here, it might work. Let me redo this one to be forward. Actually, we'll go deck. No, we'll, we'll, I don't want to jack around too much with this. We'll just go down here. Use it to lead into your most impactful drum. That's my typical, typical advice that I'd give there. Um, also, since this is an FL native plugin, of course, the panning is going to work. Let me just go back to, into this example here because it's a little more complex. I think a little better of a loop. And uh, I just want to mention for a second, like how I'm using phrasing here. So if you listen to the loop, that's kind of like a phrase. 
and this part of it repeats. So this and this are kind of like sisters or whatever you call it. And then we have like the same thing go on here again. Right? Uh, and I'm using, an, again, like a snare bass pattern where I have instead of on the this mark and this mark, it's or on the loop I just showed, which was this mark and this mark, uh, it's just slid back a little bit to where it's this one and this one. Um, and, and then I'm doing like a little fill on each of the ends. So if you notice, it's kind of like the same pattern repeats over and over again. So we have... Again. Uh, it sounds actually a little different right here. I put a, a little bit more work into making this one unique. Um, but it goes like basic f first pattern, second pattern, you know, repeat, 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 fill, repeat, 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 different fill, repeat, repeat, repeat. It looks like same pattern and then a new fill for the end. So let's kind of focus on the end for a second. Yeah, so just kind of like a little stuttery pattern down there. So playing that with my loop here, I'll kind of add the elements one at a time. Add in my snares. And as you can see, those snares are hitting on the same point as my snares in the beat. Uh, it's just kind of like a weird little kind of metallic thing. And then as you can see here, I have a second break pattern. And it doesn't even really, I think, need to be a separate break pattern because it's just the first part of this. Uh, one thing that you can do if you're like getting to your riser part with breaks uh, is instead of like keeping the pattern going where it evolves like it does over this first half, I really just pulled this back and did this and it kind of sounds like the break starts repeating itself. And that kind of in a weird way adds tension and you can even do it shorter than that. And so I'll just kind of play this. So it doesn't sound so great on its own. Almost sounds like a polka uh, drum machine. You know, the drum machines that have like the polka presets that I'm sure people are just not using at all. Um, but it does sound good in context of a track. You know, it sounds like it's increasing in energy when it's really just repeating. So then from there, I just wanted to know, show another quick example because this one has a slightly different piece that's useful. So a couple things with this one that I want to focus on are... Just the simplicity of the loop, right? Uh, it's this long, it's only, you know, two bars long. And it's basically just, as you can hear again here, phrasing. So we go. So like a, I would say these first notes make up a phrase and then. Uh, that's the second phrase and it sounds messy when you play it like that, but once you just solo it out. It's almost like a little backspin piece that happens right here. Um, and again, these two phrases kind of work together. These two phrases work together. Um, then the next thing that I'll show is you don't always have to do everything in one channel, right? Or in one, um, in one track. So uh, here I have like a little hat that I've done the high pass trick on and I just kind of add it in when it fits with my uh, drums that I also have playing here, so. So 
So as you can see, these, you know, this break that I've written here, uh, I don't know which of these I wrote first. I think it was the breaks and then I added the drum, you know, the, the more EDM -y drums after. Um, I've just kind of built these to work together. So I'm not going to play any more of this. I, I think you should hopefully get kind of an idea of the different stuff that you can do for these. Um, from there, I want to move into the second and I don't know if I'd say easier method, but just a different way you can use breaks if you don't have slice X or um, this, I would say is the faster way to like, I, anytime that I set up one of those slice X's with the good slice drums and a little gate on the volume and maybe like a couple hats that are, uh, high passed, I'll save a preset out of it as soon as I set it up to be like that. Um, so I have a couple different slice X's that I can use, but then again, sometimes it's just easier to work with audio in the DAW. So here I have another example. <laughs> So what I've done here is instead of doing, I basically did all the same steps that I just talked about with the slice X thing, um, but with audio. So as you can see here, this is my drum loop that I started out with. Um, normally your drum loop also is not gonna fit the track. So if you ever have it and it's like this, obviously, I mean, it's obvious to me and people who've done this for a while, but you wanna re restretch it. Uh, you can use resample mode if you don't mind the pitch change. Um, stretch mode if you do mind the pitch change and then also you can do the slice stretch um, or actually slice map is probably better for breaks if you ever have like a really long one slice map will try and take the individual drum hits and set them into their own into their own little portion there um, I'm just gonna go with resample mode because that's the one that I like working with the most um, it sounds the most true to my ear. I don't know why. So then what I've done here is the first step with this one is kind of like the slice X step. I'll go in here and for every single one of my drum hits. So look, we got one here, one here, one here, one here. Yeah. Just go in and do a slice for every single one of these. Um, you can also do slices by phrases if you prefer that way. So like going in here and saying, okay, this is a phrase. And this is a phrase. So then you can build a drum loop out of your different phrases that you have set up. Uh, this is, I'm just going to do this. If it doesn't work, I'm stopping because it's, that's what's made this video long as I keep trying to do this live and I have good examples that I should just be using. No, it sucks. So that's one way that you can do it with phrasing. But uh, in this example here, what I've done instead is just taken all my drum hits, sliced them per drum hit like I had first showed here. And then going in and I'm not going to do this whole loop. I'm just going to do the first section of it. Go in and do a, do a little automation like this with your fades. So then we have like nice clean ends and beginnings to our drums that you can clearly and concisely hear where the drum hits happen. Um, because to me, like I would normally do this with a limiter and just have it gate afterwards, but doing it on the input is always going to be cleaner than having a limiter that like has to guess or that you have to, you know, find the sweet spot of where it's going to gate properly. Um, I just pr prefer to do it on the input. So once I've done that, I'll keep my whole loop live, right? So keep it like this, uh, but mute it and then go in and try and write a drum loop. I'm not going to do this one live, but just try and write a loop to what my patterns are here. Right, so do that. Uh, and then while you're working on it, don't ever delete these, just kind of click it. So while I have my whole live pattern or my whole chopped pattern down here. I'll just use this as like a little sound palette, almost like when the painter's doing the, the you know, tapping into the palette to get my different drum sounds. Um, 
and then just kind of line them up in the in the same way that I've done with the other. As you can hear there, there's phrasing going on again where we have it. <clears throat> I hit that same bop, bit a bop, bit a bit a bop, bit a bit a bop, bit a bit a bit. You know, you, I can't do it with my mouth, but you get what I'm saying. Um, that repeats. Then goes into like a little double kick ending. And then again, a double kick ending is super simple drum loop here. And so one more thing before I finish with the, the drum breaks, the official drum breaks video is I'll just, I'll just say, if you don't know, gross beat is really useful for drum, drum breaks. You know, you can make your loop and use it off that. But also if you're like trying to get a little inspiration for, I'm trying to make a break, but it's not working that well. Um, going to gross beat, just get either the juggling science can be good, but it can be a little too crazy too. Also, uh, patterns, I feel like is the one that I tend to use for drum breaks. And you don't have to like make it in uh, gross beat, like don't go in and edit, or I'm not saying don't, but like you don't have to go in and make sure it's perfect from the gross beat. What I would typically do is like record a couple of these patterns. And then once you've recorded maybe like four or five different patterns on a, uh, on a you know, little automation clip here, render that to audio. So I'll just go ahead and show how to do this. Go in here, browse the parameters, <clears throat> create an automation clip. And while I'm repeating my loop, just each of them should be one bar long. So we'll just grab a couple different pieces here. I'll glue these two together, control G that, and then get some proper new breaks. <clears throat> I just want to make sure I'm using different pieces for each, for each section, different loops. Okay, so now that I've done that, go ahead and render a copy of this. And now I should have a bunch of different weird drum breaks that I can work with to build new loops. I didn't even, I didn't even play it. So it's probably going to sound terrible, but. Yeah, it's actually, it doesn't sound good as like a piece, but now you can take this, do the trick that I showed up here. Right, chop it into its little segments and make your, you know, make your new loop using phrases out of here and stuff out of here. So, so hopefully that's giving you a kind of good idea of uh, what different stuff you can get accomplished with drum breaks and how to use them and what um, tools you can use to do them. That's just the two that I use. I'm sure there's a ton more out there. So thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.